This is a fun little hack that I just learned about keeping yourself better hydrated is adding a pinch of Celtic sea salt to your water. You can either put a little bit pinch on your tongue and drink water or you can put it in your water like I do and you let it dissolve and then drink it that way. I There's a growing trend of people suggesting that salt is going to improve your hydration. If you've seen my videos in the past, you would know that Celtic sea salt is essentially just table salt with an extremely, extremely small trace amount of other elements. With that out of the way, when we're talking about hydration, we would have to actually delineate what we are trying to hydrate. There are three main spaces that we hold water, including intracellularly, interstitially between the cells, and in the bloodstream. About 50% of the water in the human body is intracellularly. An excess fluid in the interstitial space results in edema and swelling. An extra fluid inside of the plasma can lead to high blood pressure. Therefore, when most people are talking about hydration, they are speaking about getting fluid inside of their cells. The reason why electrolytes are important for this is because as electrolytes move into places, water will follow them. Therefore, the more electrolytes we can get into our cells, the more water will follow. If you look at the concentration of electrolytes inside and outside of cells, sodium and chloride, which is found in salt, makes up only a very small portion of the amount of electrolytes inside of our cells and are much more abundant outside of our cells. And in fact, when we increase sodium consumption, this increases the amount of fluid inside of the bloodstream and in between cells, but more than likely doesn't do much for the amount of fluid inside of our cells. The main intracellular electrolyte is going to be potassium, and it is extremely important for maintaining proper intracellular fluid volume. And with this, because magnesium is so important for the transportation of potassium into cells, Magnesium is also very important for maintaining intracellular fluid volume. Therefore, if you're really going to focus on electrolytes for maintaining intracellular fluid, potassium is probably going to be much more beneficial than sodium and chloride. And given that about 99% of the population is consuming more than the RDA of sodium, and less than 2% is reaching the RDA for potassium, most people are almost certainly low in potassium and sufficient in sodium. Therefore, adding sodium without potassium or magnesium may actually do quite the opposite of what most people are intending to do. There are absolutely scenarios in which increasing sodium can be important. For example, dehydration, especially during and after exercise, can result in low plasma volume, which can be replenished by the consumption of sodium and fluid. But for the average population who are consuming more than enough sodium and not enough potassium and magnesium, Adding in sodium to their water without adding potassium and magnesium may make their fluid balance discrepancies even worse. Therefore, if you are going to add some sort of electrolyte to your water, it would more than likely be recommended to have at least some source of potassium and magnesium to keep fluid balance in different compartments adequate.